When should you register as self-employed with HMRC? The short answer is before the 5th of October, after the year in which you start self-employment. If you are already registered with HMRC to do a self-assessment, you might not need to register as self-employed at all. You can just do a self-assessment. The long answer is a little bit more complicated because it always is with HMRC, so I'm going to explain it with a tiny bit of help from these badges. I'm Benedict, I'm a Chartered Accountant. This video is meant to clear up some confusion about some closely related things to do with registering for self-employment. It's not always made clear by HMRC, so let's see if we can clear up some of the confusion. First, some definitions so I, you don't get confused if I use abbreviations when I'm talking about these things. Self-assessment. Self-assessment is filling in your tax return. You can call it a self-assessment, a tax return essay, short self-assessment. That's the thing you fill in once a year as a self-employed person or as a person who for any other reason needs to complete a self-assessment. There's a dozen other reasons you might need to. You're talking about self-employment, but there are other reasons you might need to complete a self-assessment. An individual completes a self-assessment. Companies do their own tax returns, that's a separate thing. Tax year. The tax year runs from the 6th of April one year to the 5th of April the next year for stupid reasons. If I refer to tax year, that's what I'm talking about. Self-employment. Self-employment is obviously working for yourself, not through a company that you yourself own. That's not self-employment, that's being employed by your own company. Not working for someone else and being on their PAYE. If you're not on their PAYE and you're not running your own company and you're doing something for profit, you're probably self-employed. Sole trading, same thing. Sole trading and self-employment, same thing. The only subtlety there is that you can be a self-employed partner. You can have a partnership of people working together who are all technically self-employed, but they're not sole trading because it's not one of them. They're not sole, solo, they're working together. But excluding the partnership thing, which is a bit rarer and more complicated, sole trading and self-employment are the same thing. Business. A business doesn't have to be a limited company. If I say a business, your self-employment is a business. If you are a self-employed plumber, that's a business. There is no separate legal entity. There's just you, the legal entity, you, the human being. But that's a business. And a limited company is a separate legal entity, and that's also a business. So business doesn't just mean company. If I say business, we can be talking about self-employment too. Profit is what you earn minus what you spend, pretty much for business. Income minus expenses, however you want to call it. There's a dozen different words you could use, but profit is the difference. And it is profit on which you are taxed. So 20,000 pounds of income, 5,000 pounds of expenses, you've made 15,000 pounds of profit. And it's that difference, the profit figure, that is the basis for what tax you will pay as a self-employed person. Your income tax and your national insurance, which they don't call a tax, but it's a tax, and you do it as part of your self-assessment. All of that stuff, that happens based on your profit. Why do you need to register? In the old days, you used to pay something called Class 2 National Insurance as a self-employed person. You still do, though they're talking about getting rid of it, they've been talking about that for years. But you used to pay it weekly or monthly. It was like a standing order that would go out of your bank. It's a couple of quid a week, maybe three pounds and a few pence a week at the moment. It's slowly gone up, but by a small amount. The whole year, it's like 150, 160 pounds, that kind of number. And it used to be that you paid it ongoing, not as part of your self-assessment once a year, but every week or month, you'd have a standing order for your self-assessment for your class two national insurance. And so they needed to know you were registered because otherwise you'd get behind on those payments. They would say, you started being self-employed in June, so you should tell us about that as soon as possible so we can start taking your class two national insurance. And if it takes you a month, then you've got a month of back payments to pay us. That's no longer a reason because they don't take it weekly, monthly anymore. They take it as part of your self-assessment along with the class four national insurance and the income tax from being self-employed. Because of that, one of the reasons to register your self-employment quickly with HMRC has gone. That's no longer relevant. The other reason to register with, uh, self-employed with HMRC is so they know that you need to do a self-assessment. Because you do. And that means they can get you on their system, register you, give you a UTR, that's something we'll talk about, one of these codes, get you a unique taxpayer reference, get you on their system well in time for you to do your self-assessment before the deadline comes. Because of that reason, there's a lot less urgency. That's why the deadline for registering as self-employed is the 5th of October after the tax year in which you became self-employed. Because that gives them time to get you on the system, to write to you, to you, for you to get all the codes you need, to get logged on to their system, to do a self-assessment before January. So that second reason is really the reason now why we need you to be registered as self-employed. And that's why 
There's no rush to do it. You just need to do it by the 5th of October after the tax year in which you became self-employed. So if you started self-employment on the 4th of April, you just crept into that tax year, then by the 5th of October you need to register. If you started self-employment on the 7th of April, new tax year, you don't have to tell them about it until the October of the following year. Do you need to register at all? Well, there, you might not need to. If you earn under a thousand pounds from your self-employment, there is an exemption to that. I'll put a link in the description to the video about the thousand pound trading income allowance. There's an exemption that says you just don't have to register at all. There are reasons you might want to register even if you earn less than a thousand pounds, but for most people they'll just say, that's under a thousand pounds, I don't have to tell HMRC about it, I don't even have to register as self-employed. And that'll save you doing all of this stuff. So go check that video if you've earned under a thousand pounds in a tax year. The other reason you might not need to register is if you are already on their system and have to do self-assessments. If you've already got all the codes and logins that you need to do a self-assessment, then you don't really need to tell HMRC about it. You can just do your self-assessment and include in your self-assessment your new self-employment. Reasons you might already be on the system is because you've got rental income, because you earn over a certain threshold through PAYE, because you used to be self-employed, because you have dividends. There's lots of reasons you might have to do a self-assessment already, and that would save you having to register again to do a self-assessment because of your self-employment. If you think that's you, don't wait till the last minute and find out that your login has expired or something. Try to log in now and complete the self-assessment for the year that's finished. If you can start a self-assessment, then that's fine. I have never seen them close off a section of the self-assessment. I've never seen them give you a self-assessment and say, yeah, you can start a self-assessment, but you can't complete the self-employment section because you didn't tell us you were self-employed. Once you're into a self-assessment, you can complete all the bits you need, the weird bits about capital gains tax, foreign residency, and all the strange little back alleys of the self-assessment. You can complete them all. So if you can get started, you're probably fine and you don't need to tell them that you're self-employed because you will be telling them when you submit your self-assessment. If you have an old unique taxpayer reference, UTR, but you can't start self-assessment, it might be that it's been deactivated and you need to reactivate it. There is a form for that where you go online and say, you used to know me, I'm back, I'm self-employed. It's called form CWF1 and you fill that in to tell HMRC that you are now self-employed because you used to be on their system but reactivate me. You can only fill that in if you have a UTR already. HMRC says that you should register as self-employed even if you already have a UTR and do self-assessment for other reasons. You should fill in that form CWF1 and tell them about your self-employment as soon as possible and by the 5th of October following the year of your self-employment. They don't say why though. They don't give a reason to do it and they don't stop you from telling them during your self-assessment. So fill in the form if you're really paranoid about that sort of thing, but I've never seen it cause a problem. As long as you can fill in a self-assessment, that's how you can inform them that you're self-employed now. One last point about form CWF1. There is a box on it that says, please tick if you are a director. Don't tick it, it's a trap. What they mean is, if you are a director of a business, that is not self-employment. So they're trying to stop people who think they're self-employed because they run their own companies and are directors of the companies and work for their own company. That relationship, that's not self-employment. But they don't explain it, they just say, if you're a director, and then they, if you tick that box, it screws up the whole form and you can't submit it. You can be a director of a company and also self-employed. You might make model trains and sell them on eBay as self-employment and also be a director of Tesco's or some big company or a tiny company. Like, these things are unrelated and absolutely fine. You can do both of these things. What they're trying to say is, being a director is not self-employment, but they don't explain that very well. And even the help box that you can click next to that little tick box is just wrong. The pop-up says, as a director, you can't be classed as self-employed. That's just straight wrong. Ignore that box, don't tick it. Do take a minute to worry that these are the people who run the tax system for the country. But apart from that, just move on. When should you register? Well, like I said at the start, 5th of October is the deadline. So this is assuming you are self-employed, you've earned over a thousand pounds from self-employment in a tax year, or for some other reason you do want to tell them about your self-employment, there are other reasons, check that other video, and you don't have a UTR, in that case, register. Don't pre-register, don't feel like you have to inform HMRC before you start working. You're about to work as a freelance plumber or graphic designer or whatever your job is, 
Don't feel like you have to tell HMRC in advance. You can start work. There's no law saying you have to tell them before you work. You can do work for yourself. You can earn money. It's a good idea to do the work first because then you'll find out if you're going to earn more than a thousand pounds. You might go through all the trouble of registering as self-employed and then find out it never really took off and you only earned 800 pounds and you could have saved yourself the trouble and never registered. So don't pre-register for your work. Having said that, there's no benefit in waiting to register to the last minute. It doesn't delay when you pay tax or anything. So as soon as you know you are earning over a thousand pounds in a tax year or for some other reason want to do a self-assessment, get on and tell them. If you've missed the 5th of October deadline, don't freak out, just tell them as soon as possible. Now they say online that they can issue fines and penalties for missing the 5th of October deadline for registering. But that's just to scare you straight because the real deadline is the 31st of January for completing your self-assessment. If you get hold of them in November or even maybe December and tell them that you're self-employed, they'll have time to get you on the system. It involves writing to you and then you filling in some forms and then probably them writing to you a second time. That's the delay, that's what takes weeks and weeks. If you get hold of them so late that you can't get on their system in time to do a self-assessment before the 31st of January, that's what you might get in trouble for. You might get a hundred pound penalty. You might get interest added onto your self-assessment. All that kind of stuff happens. The 5th of October, although they could penalize you, I've never seen them do it. That's just to scare you into getting on with it and registering and not leaving it until the 15th of January thinking, right, I've got a couple of weeks to do my self-assessment. I should tell HMRC I'm self-employed. Like, no, they don't want you to do that. That's too late. So don't freak out if you've just missed the 5th of October deadline. Just get on and tell them as soon as possible. So, where do the badges come into this? I feel like this is glaring off the light quite badly. I think I'm blinding you. Badges. As ever with HMRC, you get a bunch of codes. And this is just to help you remember what codes you need. So, the IM5 badge, this represents your national insurance number. The little blue tit, this represents your UTR, your unique taxpayer reference, which is a 10 digit code. And the little terrier doggy thing, that represents your user ID, which is a 12 digit code. And you have a password with that. It's like for logging in to government pages. You need all three of those to do a self-assessment. Those are a minimum, that's what we're trying to get. And finding out which of these you don't have tells us what we need to do next to get you everything you need to do a self-assessment. So first is the national insurance number. Almost everyone's got one. That's why I've got my IM5 badge on. Like, it's just issued when you're a kid. Like, I think I got mine when I was 16 or 14 or something. You need a national insurance number. So if you don't have one, phone the national insurance helpline to get one or get it reissued or something. First, make sure you know your national insurance number and don't lose that again. You're gonna need that a lot. But that you need even for paid jobs. You're, that'll be on pay slips and things like that. So if you've had any kind of work, you've probably got a national insurance number. Now, your user ID, which is the 12 digit code and a password that you use to log in to HMRC's website or to other parts of the government, you may already have that for another reason. You may have set one up for some other reason to do with logging into government services. If you have that, the only thing you're missing then is the 10 digit unique taxpayer reference. Go into your user ID, log in to HMRC using your user ID and password, if that works, and try to register for the tax from within the login. It'll just save a step, a painful and slow step, because they'll already know who you are and have verified your identity to a certain extent, so you can register for being self-employed within that login. Try that first if that works for you. So use that login to register for self-employment, which will get you the 10 digit unique taxpayer reference you need to do a self-assessment and probably an activation code in the post. The activation code is a one-time code that you use just to get the services working online and then you destroy it and throw it away and you never need it again. That's why I don't have a badge for an activation code. I should get like a sticker or something, something disposable for an activation code. Use your login to get your unique taxpayer reference. If you do have a unique taxpayer reference, you've got the birdie, but you don't have a login for the government, you don't have the dog, go to HMRC's website and create a login. That will create a 12 digit user ID for you. That will allow you to create a password for it. That will trigger a activation code being sent in the post. That's another reason why it takes a while. So many steps, like I can see there's, there's security involved. They don't want people fraudulently doing self-assessment claims and screwing up people's tax returns, but it's messy, it's quite messy. So use, if you've got your unique taxpayer reference, sorry, not that one, this one. If you've got your unique taxpayer reference, then go and create the login you need, the 12 digit user ID. 
Finally, and this is the most common situation, if you have your national insurance number, but you don't have a unique taxpayer reference 10 digit, 10 digit number, you don't have a user ID of 12 digit number to log in, or you do have one, but it just doesn't allow you to create a self-assessment ID, then go to the link I'll put in the description down below and click register online. Or you could Google it yourself, but HMRC themselves throw up the wrong page sometimes. Don't go to any third party sites, any non-government sites people will try to charge you for doing what is free. Don't follow any ads that do that kind of thing. Go only to the government site and click register online, preferably in the link that I'll put in the description below. You go to register online, you give them your email address and you get started and you fill in all the details about your new self-employment. And that will not only create a government login for you, the 12 digit user ID, but also get you a unique taxpayer reference, the 10 digit birdie that you need. Uh, which of these they give you straight away in an email or on the screen, which of these they write to you in the post, that seems like it's always changing, but some of them you'll have to wait for in the post. And probably also you'll get the sticker, you'll get an activation code to switch on your self-assessment. You know you have succeeded when you can get logged in to the pages and click on the complete a self-assessment button and start a self-assessment. You don't have to do it, you don't have to finish it, but if you can get in and start a self-assessment for you as an individual, then you know you've got all of the codes that you need. Keep them all safe, you'll need them for years and years and you'll definitely lose them because you only need them once a year, so people always forget them. Keep them safe somewhere, get some password software and keep the stuff safe. If you can't register online, you can call HMRC, but they will almost certainly tell you to go away. There are very few and very specific reasons why they will help you on the phone to register. This is one of those things where they do not want to talk to you. They are too busy. There are only certain digitally excluded groups who they will help through this on the phone. Not being able to use their website is not going to cut it with them. They will just be annoyed at you. Sorry. So, hopefully that helps, gets you where you need. You. I think the purpose of this video isn't just to say that the deadline is the 5th of October after the tax year. The tax year runs the 6th of April to the 5th of April. If you're self-employed in the tax year and earn over a thousand pounds, get registered before the 5th of October. That's fine, that takes a couple of seconds. This is more to clear up the confusion around what registering is because it's not helpful that you have a code called a national insurance number that you've had for years, but you're also expected to get another code called a unique taxpayer reference, a UTR, that I mean, what's a national insurance number if not a reference for taxpayers that is unique? And that you also need to get a user ID that is also just a bunch of numbers and looks kind of like a UTR if you're not used to them. And that the thing that you use to log it, you can see it gets a bit confusing. And the process for registering also involving some things coming in the post and activation codes is a bit confusing. I just wanted to try and clear it up, if at all possible, to make it clear that once you've got those three things, and can start self-assessment, that's it, you're good, you're registered, you can do what you need to do. You've reached the point you need to with registering for self-employment. If I've been unclear about anything or could have explained it better or you have any questions, do please put them in the comments underneath and I will try to explain. I don't think I'll make a fact sheet this week for this one. You just need to make sure you keep plugging away until you get those three codes. That's all you need to know. Uh, but I am gonna ask you to like and subscribe because that's what everyone does because People need to know this information and I hope this is a reasonable way to explain this information and there will be thousands of people out there trying to register as self-employed right now who could do with a little help and if you click like and subscribe then they will find this video. The way I think of it is that if we were in a coffee shop and I explained this to you face to face and at the end you said hmm, thanks then that's a like and a subscribe. It only takes two seconds, it doesn't cost you anything. If however you stood up, looked at me dead in the eyes, turned around and walked away, Whew. then I guess this wasn't the video for you and by all means don't leave a like and a subscribe. See you next week, new video every week. Let me know in the comments what you want the video to be about. Thanks.